harder raid content and no world buffs. Fresh just got a lot more interesting. It's basically talking about classic Fresh, right? And if you're like me, if you're anything like me, I love the idea about a classic Fresh, okay? I love playing Fresh servers. I love like the, the, the new like experience of like pumping and like, you know, having everything like from the beginning and like farming gear, getting groups for something. Nobody's level 60, there's no gold in the game. I love the idea about Fresh, okay? So let's see what this video is all about. It's also like a very like hyped up like topic for a lot of people, right? Like now that TPC is out, now that Classic WoW has been finished and the era servers is out, people are like, well, what about a Fresh? Are we gonna get a Fresh? They did like, they, we had like a blue post earlier in the, in the year about like, what would we like in a Fresh? Do we like tune content? Do we want change? Do we want like this or that, right? There's lots of, lots of things, so it's an interesting topic. So let's see what this video is about. And Willie here. I know this happened like two weeks ago. I wanted to get around to doing it. I might have gone just a tad overboard on the faction stuff, but I do care about it, so I thought it warranted hmm. that level of okay. attention. Let's have a look at the survey that went out for Classic not so long ago. But two things oh, before that was that we server, start. Server, yeah. Number one, if you want as close to a Classic experience as possible to how it was in vanilla, I'm not sure that you are going to get that from Blizzard again. Yeah. And I say again because Classic was likely as close close as it's going to get. Any True. further variation is going to deviate further from the original format from what I can tell to try and offer players a slightly different experience and make the game worth another look both in cadence and content without totally compromising the feeling of how the game was then and keeping it within the spirit of classic. I believe this as players have pretty common complaints as for certain areas of the game that deserve attention as will be addressed in the survey. And classic presented the biggest workload for Blizzard due to the lacking data set from very early patches. So going or attempting to go full patch by patch progressive, for example, would be a nightmare for a likely a lesser payload than leaning on the data they already have available or established again we i think actually classic fresh and having a lot of different perspectives and a lot, lot, lot lots of as you would say it's a very dangerous word to use right changes a lot of changes is not bad right because what we've realized and what i mean what i have realized at least from like playing classic wow is that some changes are welcomed some changes is actually better and some changes are good for the game right because for instance like the leeway patching maybe even like you know you know to some extent which is like a very controversial topic as well like the world buffs like do you want world buffs do you want to store the world buffs in the in the container like the boom container like there's lots of like things right that needs to be addressed and like if there were to be a, tre uh, a fresh, do we want well buffs? Do we want them to be storable? Do we want there to be leeway? Do we want there to be batching as big as there is? Like, what do we want, right? And uh, a lot of people want well buffs. I think well buffs, it's sort of like a, uh, a double-edged sword for me personally, at least. I think well buffs are amazing to raid with. I love raiding with well buffs. It's fun. It's, it, it is very enjoyable. And it also adds a little bit of like, spice to the raid where like if you die you lose your buffs right you have to like not die you have to live right there, but then there's also like the griefing aspect of it right and then like it's like it's really annoying getting world buffs it's very obnoxious so there's like two there's like two sides to that stone right with the intention of actually giving players something a bit new rather than copy pasting the game and putting it out yeah. as it was back then yeah with this in mind combined with the proposed cadence changes i mean for no I, i'm just saying that it's not like i liked the idea behind you know the booming you know when you could pick up your world buffs you can you can store them in your boom and you can keep playing your character i am a big fan and the way i play the game i like that a lot because that means i can go on my on my main character i can pick up all my buffs i can pick everything i can store it up and i can keep playing my character locking with world buffs makes it so you can't play your character right because you, you you need to lock out and like you need to save them so yeah, let's keep going. Sorry. The life cycle of the game and the chance servers will relaunch sometime after they conclude. God I'm damn. overall Sorry quite loose <laughs> when it comes to changing things on the possible relaunch, even if they seem quite drastic at a first glance. I understand that you want the game to be in the spirit of how it was, but you also don't want a ghost town, so it's likely yeah. there is going to be some compromising therein. The second thing to mention is that Blizzard going down the route of progression or fresh servers should come as no surprise. Over a year ago, Blizzard picked up Holly Longdale from Dark Poor Games, who headed okay. up the EverQuest series under her alias Windstalker. You can see posts from as early as 2015 on their forums asking the EverQuest. community for I never played EverQuest personally, so I don't know about that too much. Servers and what they would prefer. She was also on BlizzCon Online this year on the panel for TBC as well. I don't understand exactly what's said here or how things went to EverQuest 
request with these systems in place but it looks as though they've had new servers released earlier this year in april okay so at least it still exists and servers exist which is one upon them not existing i suppose oh and one final thing before the survey if you like what i'm doing here sub to the channel it helps immensely it's free and it takes all of two seconds and you can drop a like and a comment too to help with the algorithm rng you know the deal with how you youtube go. works it. by now right all it. that said let's take a look at this thing so first of all for wow classic fresh start realms we're considering accelerating the cadence <laughs> of new phase releases and making some oh yeah never mind Let he's actually talking about that right now personally my opinion before we get into this i think if there was to be a fresh faster phases would be interesting speed them up a little bit right don't have the the entire thing last like a year and a half changes to allow players to keep up which cadence would you prefer most for a wow classic fresh start realm we've got the original one just 21 to 22 months accelerated 12 no. month cadence with a fresh start every 12 months and accelerated six months with a fresh start every six months following now the original one i'm just gonna straight up say seems i think maybe six months is a bit too fast but a year seems pretty good i think for like the whole thing right that would be like a new phase every two months i think that's a good that's a good like pacing if you want to like get some pop, 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 like that way too long 12 months is perhaps on the long side as well considering there is an intention to alter the game to fit a new cadence and launch new servers with no. the old one's conclusion six in my opinion seems a bit on the short side for the life of an mmo server if i had this survey i'd say other and around eight to ten months which should be enough eight time for each phase enough time to not have the server die in aq and be able to get stuck into next ramus with whatever changes are kept before the new server kicks off speed the server goes is quite dependent on the content in it though which leads to the second part of the survey the juicy stuff and i'm going to tackle these a little bit out of order just for the sake of well you'll see hopefully first of all faster xp rates depends on the server cadence to some no don't make it faster i think leveling is a big part of the game I enjoy it. I know a lot of people don't. A lot of people just want to go to the, 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 the final stages and the raid. I actually like level. It makes me like really like care about the character I'm playing instead of just like, oh, this is like whatever, right? But yeah, let's see. Extent. I'm saying this is somebody who's leveled a lot of characters in Classic and has since been working on the Draenei for TBC and the 2.3 leveling changes do speed things up significantly. It feels a lot smoother, especially combined with the no more elites on group quests out in the world. This does yep. reduce the impact of the open world and the progression level of your character, however. I would not be surprised if they did this. Personally, I'd be fine with no changes to the speed, but again, you need warm bodies to play the game in an MMO. And I guess for that's a lot true. of people, they're going to be turned off before even trying. They hear no leveling speed changes. Next up, the barbershop. I've heard of faction pride, class pride, mm. specialization pride. Is that I choose this haircut on the character creation screen pride? Someone out there probably. Don't see who this hurts, sure why not. But only on Alliance, of course, though. Horde wouldn't be able to fit such a civilized feature <laughs> into their society, of course. Earning gold at faster rates. The sole impact here would be on purchases which have a static value like repairs, nah. respects, new abilities, and most importantly, your mount and epic mount. I don't really see the point. Even if the server isn't alive forever, the pricing is quite high, but achievable. And I yeah, think it's something think so. that players will be a lot more savvy working. And the thing is, like, if you make more gold, the gold will just be more inflated. The only thing you really need to use gold for in terms of game stuff is, like, buying skills and your mounts, right? Everything else will just be inflated. Uh, yeah, so, I don't, I don't know. ...towards the second time around. The black market auction house did anybody actually have bank space for no, vanity items i, don't, I, don't I like tried this. to collect things in classic and most of them are sitting on an alt as boes because we don't have any kind of collection logs whatsoever there's no transmog and to be honest i kind of like seeing the transformation from previous clown suit to no, bisque clown I, I, suit I don't that like people this. have in classic also vanity items do still exist on the regular auction house like tibu so i don't really see the need for this no. summoning stones at dungeons maybe it's a bit of a lock bias thing here but that extra utility you could bring to the group was very nice however i will say i do like only needing two people to summon instead of requiring three there is something very special about not having summoning stone. I don't mind running to the dungeons. I don't mind making the journey to run to places. That's it's not really a big that's not really a big deal for me. But if they if they did add summoning stones and they made them work, it wouldn't really make or break it for me. I don't think so. If anything, the warlock version should have been more powerful. You know? I know this is a TBC thing. Maybe warlocks can power up summoning stones using soul shards and allow them to work for five minutes or something. Just a thought. Increased rate of item drops. I again don't feel this is needed. I've never really been somebody who raids for oh, really? loot. I know a lot of people are, so I can see this being divisive. 
It makes those big drops more exciting and special and keeps the content fresh for a longer period of time rather than clear. Well, no, the thing is, yeah, I know what you guys are going to say, like, yeah, well, that's boring having to walk there. That's boring having to do this. But, like, the more of these things we add, right, the more, like, the more things we add, like, it, it just adds up more. And, like, suddenly you don't even have to play the game, right? You just get summoned there, get summoned there, instant leveling, like, instant that, right? Like, that's why, like, it, it's what makes the game a little bit special that you have to, like, go out and do shit, right? You have to, like, run there. You have to, like, do some quests, like... It's I don't know I, I I like it man it's um it it it's what makes the game the game right I feel like for the formality of receiving purples original AV oh boy sure let's see how it would have been why not or would still start halfway up the map except there's yeah. far far more choke points and difficulty advancing yeah this is a no this <laughs> this is uh yeah with these changes. Good the thing luck. is, people always, people always, this is really a big issue, right? Because people always used to say, like, oh, I want the old Alteric Valley. I want the Alteric Valley that lasts five days. Nobody wants that. Alliance, that's all I've got to say. In fact, I'd vote yes for this one, just to see if I'm totally right or wrong, or just for the sake of change at least. Why not? Let's see how it would have been. And finally, the big three. More difficult raid and dungeon encounters, no world buffs in raid, and an increased debuff limit on hmm. raid bosses. All of these kind of go together as one big thing for me because they're all interlinked. And the TLDR is, yes, it's good. They should do it, or try it at least. So in order to buff raids, you need to be able to estimate how powerful players will be. World buffs were like a 30%. So the thing is, will, will buffing raids mean new mechanics, or will it just be increasing the damage and the health? Right, because that's a big thing, right? Power gain, give or take, depending on your class. One wipe on buff content could essentially lock you out until you've gone back and got your next set of buffs, giving a very negative gameplay loop and overly punishing content. And whilst players in original vanilla actually did this on progression bosses, I can't see people being overly keen to engage with that kind of content nowadays. So that would be why I think world buffs should be removed from raiding content. And that goes along with buffed raids. If they're actually somewhat interesting, they cannot exist at the same time as world buffs. The dungeons, there are actually some kind of hard fights in dungeons where bosses just do a lot of damage. But sure, why not? We can give it a look. An increased debuff limit honestly only changes the game for Affliction Locks and Shadow Priest significantly at the moment. Every other class that hasn't been using debuffs isn't just because no debuff slots, yeah. but have a think about how your mana bar looks after a longer fight on a hybrid. I, I think adding more debuff slots could be kind of nice. I think so. DPS, you yeah. can press Starfire. Because it makes a lot more stuff viable. Starfire for two minutes and you're going to need to end it, up. It makes it, that you, yeah, exactly, Fob. It makes so you can play more classes. Like you could play more interesting specs and classes if, if there is more debuff slots, right? down ranking even with a dark rune and a mana potion i doubt this will make any considerable notice to the dps rotation of hybrids without any significant changes to the mana efficiency of said classes which goes into the region of actually changing classes for there to be real change yeah the same goes for enhancement for rat for elemental you know the deal i did say shadow priests will benefit because they just take up so many debuff slots with their regular rotation but they're also prime ooming material after a few minutes too also I think like if you want to go like all the way right just just removing world buffs from like raids actually makes it a lot more difficult because world buffs is basically like if you play a warrior and you have world buffs you do double damage like no meme like you actually do double damage it would change it a lot for sure with the raids being harder i would expect like the bosses have more health compounding the issue of mana problems on some classes affliction locks though they're going to be living the dream we get it is true dude unironically like it's 50 percent of your damage dots. we've got life tap to never go oom sounds pretty good from a totally unbiased point of view maybe with buff content bosses hit so hard that warriors can't even play fury pro anymore and have to go for more mitigation gear and defensively oriented talents hmm. and then dps as a trickle down effect have to play around that by generating less threats it could shake up things a little bit more than you expect the top DPS will still be the non-mana users as well, your rogues and warriors. They can always DPS to their fullest, allowing for threat, of course, without having to worry about going out of rage or energy. Yes. So yeah, all three of these, pretty good. Give them a go, for sure. There are yeah, two I mean, I don't see a reason not to. I think I think it would actually be really interesting, now, now that I think of it, right? Because like it would make it more challenging, right? And it would also like make it so that you don't have to deal with picking them up and worrying about the world buffs all the time concerns initially though given a potential classic fresh number one mage boosting and gold farms being unaddressed 
all of the existing data of exactly how to boost in every single dungeon is very publicly available at this point in time. If we go in again without this addressed in any manner, then people are going to be generating absolutely untold amounts of gold from a very early point in time in dungeons such as Maradon, for example, which will be available early on. I don't know how this could be fixed or how easily it could be fixed, but it's something to think about because it was a bit of a problem in Classic. Secondly, all of these things mentioned here are things where Blizzard has the existing data or they're just kind of changing the difficulty slider on it. There are already in the game plenty of I'm gonna one-shot you mobs even if you have full health, they just don't have much health. Think of the Molten Destroyers in Molten Core for example. Yeah. If every single fight in a PvE scene turns into patchwork levels of you need to spam the tank for dear oh life non-stop before they get one shot, that would be a shame when there could be more depth to it. I'd hope the difficulty increases could be done in a mechanical sense, not just purely a numerical one but I wouldn't hold my breath. I'd like- That's what I said earlier, yeah. It would be fun if they added like some more mechanics, but it probably would just be like more damage, more health, like stuff like that, right? That would be the thing. Let's talk more about this in the future though, so stay tuned for that. But as a whole, these seem like some interesting changes for a first attempt, and they could breathe new life into fresh and give us a slightly so. different perspective. Yeah. Whilst keeping Azeroth we know and love. And honestly, I'm quite intrigued. Let me know your thoughts on it, whether you think it sounds interesting or whether it's just not much is gonna change in the end. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching and listening in, and I'll see you all in the next one very soon not too bad man not too bad man if you guys want to watch the video by yourself or like give it a like or something like that i'm gonna link it in the chat it is a very big talking point and do we want world buffs do we want dual spec do we want this like what do we want right like i don't know